scientists, let's talk about ecosystems. Have you ever been eating and stopped to wonder why? Energy. You and all other living organisms need energy. You get all of your energy from a variety of foods you eat, like hamburgers, chicken strips, and salad. But let's think, where did those delicious lettuce bites get their energy from? They got it from the sun. Yep, our sun. All of the energy that living things use and eat comes from the sun. The sun's energy is used by plants or producers to make and produce their own energy. Plants use a process called photosynthesis to convert sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water into energy. Plants can then be eaten or consumed by consumers. Consumers are any organisms that eat to get energy. Consumers aren't just limited to eating producers or plants though. They can also eat other consumers as well, like a wolf eating a rabbit. There are even organisms that get their energy from eating dead material. And they're called decomposers because they take dead material and decompose it into smaller pieces and soil. These are things like worms, fungi, and bacteria. Let's take a look at a local park to see producers, consumers, and decomposers interacting as an ecosystem. Okay, let's look for some producers. Ooh, I see a lot of grass. Grass is a producer that makes its own energy from the sun using photosynthesis. Now, let's find something that eats grass. Ooh, a cricket. A cricket is a consumer because he has to eat grass to get the energy. So when we draw our energy flow, we point the arrow towards him since he's getting the energy. Now let's find a bird that eats a cricket. A finch is also a consumer since he has to eat to get energy. Again, the flow of energy points to him. Now what we've made here is a food chain, but nature is not that clean and easy. Instead of these three organisms, like in this park where we have a food chain, there would actually be hundreds more organisms. Let's say the finch also eats nuts from the tree. Ooh, and maybe a snake comes along and he eats some crickets. And he also eats our little bird friend here. Oh, goodbye bird friend. And maybe there's a hawk circling that eats birds and snakes. This would be an example of a food web. Usually, food webs don't include decomposers, but let's draw them in on ours as well. Let's say all of our animals die. What happens next is decomposers like bacteria, worms, and fungi would then eat all of those organisms and decompose them. This would be an example of a more complete food web. A food web is just a network of food chains that follow the flow of energy in an ecosystem. Sometimes an ecosystem or food web gets disrupted. Let's take a look back at ours without the decomposers. So this is our food web. And let's say for some reason, the bird goes missing. There's a lot of reasons that this could happen. There could be another invasive bird species that kills off our bird. There could be disease. It could be human interaction, like deforestation. Or it could be something natural, like migratory patterns. Either way, the bird is now gone. What happens to our food web now? Who eats the nuts and turns the nut energy into usable energy for the snake and the hawk? Who eats the cricket? Removing one organism from an ecosystem can have drastic consequences. Let's pause and look at a question. 